Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our colleagues and friends joining us from around the world. Welcome to Tourism Naturally. My name is Ryan Fincham, and I am the director of the Center for Protected Area Management here at Colorado State University. It is an honor to be co-hosting this conference along with the Human Dimensions of Natural Resources Department. Our department head, Mike Manfredo, is a member of the Tourism Naturally Founding Consortium and initiated the idea of bringing this conference to Colorado State University. And he has been instrumental in ensuring its success. Mike Manfredo, along with David Knight, are my co-hosts in this conference. We also have our conference team here, including Emily LeBlanc and Paul Layden, who have done most of the heavy lifting to put this event together. While this is a virtual conference and people are joining us from all over the world, it is being organized and hosted by Colorado State University. So I would like to open this conference with the CSU land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other Native tribes. We recognize the Indigenous peoples as the original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land-grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion, and significantly that our founding came at a dire cost to Native American nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us for this conference, Tourism Naturally, Protected Areas, Tourism, and a Changing World. As we get ready to launch this conference, I find myself reflecting on my recent trip to Tikal National Park and World Heritage Site in Guatemala. I just got back a week ago, and this site is really an ideal case study or example of many of the topics that we will be discussing in this conference. Tikal and its surrounding communities are heavily dependent on nature-based and cultural tourism. It is an economic driver for the entire region, and the livelihoods of the local people have been in tremendous flux over the past three years. Like all over the world, the pandemic has put local guides, tourism service workers, private tourism businesses, local communities, NGO staff and government park managers and rangers into a cycle of constant change. As we look forward, even though we are moving into a stage where we will likely be living a bit more normally with the pandemic for the foreseeable future, the change that became so evident during the pandemic is likely here to stay. As we see unprecedented levels of change happening all over the globe in financial markets, on the political front, in social movements, in the way we communicate and share information with each other, and in the role that technology plays in our lives. Change will continue, and those of us working in sustainable tourism and protected areas will need to figure out how to continue to create authentic opportunities that help us achieve conservation goals, create meaningful and dignified livelihood activities, and contribute to human well-being, all in the context of this perpetual change. It's not going to be an easy task, but one of the good things is that we're not in this alone. Our own Center for Protected Area Management is launching this December a brand new initiative called the Sustainable Tourism Community of Learning and Practice that will build on our existing programs and focuses on capacity building that creates on the ground change with sustainable tourism and protected areas, while also providing an environment for support for people that are on the front lines of change. Events like this one, Tourism Naturally, are critical for exchanging information and ideas, for learning new things, or for feeling supported and being part of a broader community. We have two days full of inspiring talks and panel discussions, plus opportunities for students from around the world to connect with each other and with professionals in the field. 
This idea of bridging the generation gap is in fact an important inspiration for this conference. This will be the fifth iteration of the Tourism Naturally Conference since its initiation in 2016 with the University of Sastri in Italy. It then moved on to Austria and the UK. And the last Tourism Naturally Conference was held as an online symposium by the Degendorf Institute of Technology in Germany. The Tourism Naturally Conference is supported by the Foundational Consortium, whose members will be speaking shortly as a part of this opening. For this fifth edition of the conference, we have over a thousand attendees registered from over 50 countries. With our online and recorded format, many will join live, but many will also be able to watch the conference sessions on their own time through the Whova platform. Remember, the Whova platform provides a great way to connect with any of the 1,000 attendees. And the recording from these sessions will be available for up to three months after the conference. So if you have a new date or you're looking for something to do on a Friday night, you can invite them to watch or rewatch some of these sessions. Enjoy. <laughs> I would like to extend a special thank you to our advisory board members and the consortium members for their support in this conference. I'd also like to thank the speakers for joining us. Over the next two days, we'll have 21 speakers, six of which will be student presenters. There really have been so many people involved with this conference. However, I'd like to take just a moment to mention specifically one of our academic committee members for this conference, who also happened to have gotten her PhD from our own Human Dimensions of Natural Resources Department, and that's Dr. Nina Roberts. Nina tragically passed away on March 28th, 2022. She was actively involved in planning for this conference initially before she started to take a turn for the worse in her battle with cancer. Nina was nationally known for her work developing connections to healthy lifestyles in the outdoors with urban youth, girls, and women. She was involved in outdoor programming and leadership youth development, and race and gender issues. She had a steadfast commitment to social and environmental justice, including her advocacy for breaking down barriers related to diversity, park access, and recreational opportunities on public lands. She was a force to be reckoned with and is sorely missed. Thank you all for allowing me just to take a few moments to recognize and honor her here. I'd also like to mention the Murley Pledge which is an initiative of the University of Queensland, Australia. In summary, the Murley Pledge is a step in the right direction for increasing the visibility and contribution of women in public and professional forums. It encourages us all to advocate for gender balance and diversity in all professional events. While this event will not be perfect, we have used this pledge to help motivate and guide us. I wanted to be sure to mention the Murley Pledge in case others participating in this conference are not familiar with it. I only found out about it recently. I encourage you to read it, consider adopting its guidelines, promote it within your networks, and event by event, from person to person, we can start to ensure that all voices are properly represented in the work that we do. As we get started, I'd just like to reiterate that we have a great technical team working behind the scenes to help us pull this conference off. However, even with all the planning, we will likely experience some hiccups and challenges along the way. So thanks in advance for your patience with us as we are all still learning how to effectively run virtual conferences. So with that, thank you once again for being here and let's get to work. I'd now like to invite our conference and event guru from the Human Dimensions of Natural Resources Department, Emily LeBlanc. Emily, it's all yours. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for introducing me and thanks for introducing everyone to this conference. I am Emily LeBlanc. I am the conference and event coordinator here at Human Dimensions of Natural Resources at Colorado State University. Uh, before we get started, I would like to introduce some of the foundational consortium members who founded this conference in 2016. First, uh, Dr. Michael Manfredo at Colorado State University is the uh, professor and department head here at Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. His research activities focus on the role of social science in natural resource management and global wildlife values. He has been published in various journals, including Wildlife Society Bulletin, Society of Natural Resources, and Journal of Social Psychology. 
He also has published books titled Influencing Human Behavior and Who Cares About Wildlife? He was the founding co-editor of the journal entitled Human Dimensions of Wildlife. Prior to starting at Colorado State University, he held positions at the University of Illinois and Oregon State University. Next, I would like to introduce Federico Nicolini with the University of Pisa. Federico, if you could unmute yourself and start your video. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Emily. I'm very honored to participate uh, to this conference. Um, and I have to thank you, Professor Manfredo, for his vision about this uh, uh, event, this series of events, as Ryan said before. And um, I'm working for you the and representing the University of Pisa. Just a very uh, short uh, presentation about uh, our university. Uh, we are located in, in Tuscany. Uh, we have the story of 700 hundreds here and with some past uh, emeritus students like Galileo Galilei or the Nobel Prizes, Carducci, Fermi and Rubia. And uh, at this moment, we have 20 departments and, and two campus. One is about tourism that is cited in Lucca. And we have more than uh, 50,000 uh, students and uh, 3,000 uh, 3, among professors and administrative staff. We have uh, 58 ma uh, bachelor's degree and uh, 64 uh, master's degrees and 31 uh, PhD. So I'm very, very happy to, uh, sorry, I'm trying. Uh, Okay, I'm very, very happy to be uh, here and to work in this conference. Thank you, Federico. Um, next, I would like to introduce Dr. Gong Jian with Central China Normal University. Dr. Gong. Yes, I'm very happy. Good morning. Yeah, Bon dia and Zhao uh, hao. Women, uh, all the family from all the world. So our distinguished professor and uh, our PhD student and our distinguished uh, leaders from our tourism industries. So I want to give the warm welcome to the everyone and on behalf of our sister and you. And uh, I really appreciate my man friend who, yes, uh, uh, and uh, my CSU colleagues, Dr. Bell and our Mike, uh, our Debbie Knight. Uh, they have bridged a great bridge between the China and the USA. And now we have the two master program focused on the tourism management and the national park and recreation. And now we are going to build a new collaborative program in China uh, between the CSU and the CCU. Uh, with the undergraduate degree. So, and uh, also I want to invite everybody uh, to visit China. And also I hope I have the opportunity to treat everybody to, to see Chinese new national park. And I hope everybody can enjoy the wonderful two days conference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gong. Thank you for joining us. Um, Next, I would like to introduce Christian Steckenbauer from Degendorf Institute of Technology. Uh, Christian is a professor in economy and tourism management at Degendorf Institute of Technology. As you heard earlier, Degendorf was the last host of this conference. Christian's current research is in market, markets and tourism, health tourism, product development, service design and in innovation, experience design, tourism marketing, and management. His past positions include fa faculty positions in various universities, in addition to being the Director of Strategic Planning and Tourism Product Development at the Salzburg State Board of Tourism. Also from Degendorf is Marcus Herntree. Har uh, Marcus Herntree is a professor in tourism at Degendorf Institute of Technology. 
His research is in health tourism, destination development, participation in development processes, product development, and service design in tourism. Marcus also serves as member of the Senate, course director of Bachelor of International Tourism Management, and Master of International Tourism Development, member of the Examination Board, Chairman of the Examination Board, Internship Officer, and Foreign Officer at Degendorf. Thank you to both of both Marcus and Christian for uh, the past conference. And now I'd like to introduce Arede Azara from University of Derby. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Iride Azara, and it is um, very much my pleasure uh, to be here today at this important edition of Tourism Naturally Conference. Um, I'm here representing uh, the University of Derby, one of the original universities that founded the Tourism Naturally Consortium. And my university is located in the center of the United Kingdom and it is right next to the UK oldest national park in the world, well definitely in the UK, apologies, and it's the Peak District National Park. Um, we deliver world leading and internationally recognized research across a number of subject areas, including sustainability, zero carbon reduction, business and social and economic impact, and of course, environmental sciences. Um, my area of expertise is, um, together with my colleagues, is very much on responsible tourism. And we believe in the importance of protecting the natural environment whilst building sustainable, resilient communities through tourism, promoting accessible tourism solutions, and of course, improving well being through nature connectedness. We also do research in um, supply chain management and su sustainable hospitality uh, solutions and very much on helping visitors and communities achieve uh, those behaviors that we all want to see, um, both in terms of uh, production and consumption. Fundamentally, our research is about building a better future, both for businesses and societies and the natural world. And again, as I said, I am very thankful to be here today and I look forward to um, enjoyed this conference. Thank you. Thank you, Yuere. Uh, also from University of Derby is Eleni Mikopoulou. Eleni is an associate professor in business management at the University of Derby. Her research interests include technological applications and information systems in tourism, online consumer behavior, and technology acceptance. She also has been actively researching the fields of accessibility, wellness, and e-tourism for over 15 years. She has been published in over 70 academic journals, book chapters, and conference papers. She has guest edited several journals and is the editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Spa and Wellness. Next, I would like to introduce Nicholas Papas with University of Sunderland, if you could, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, also from uh, the northeast of uh, England. My name is Nicolas Papas. I'm a professor in uh, tourism development and crisis management at the University of Sunderland. And I am also the director of uh, uh, the Center for Research in uh, Tourism Excellence, uh, which is also based at the University of Sunderland. Along with uh, the University of uh, Derby, uh, another uh, member of the permanent consortium of TNC, uh, we operate uh, also as an administrative authority, leading administrative authority of uh, Athena. Athena stands for the Association of Tourism, Hospitality and Events Networks in Academia, which is uh, which consists of uh, 22 tourism-oriented research centers uh, from 14 different countries. Uh, as far as it concerns the University of Sunderland, uh, my institute, uh, we are proud members of uh, the TFC, uh, TNC Consortium. Uh, and uh, our studies focus on uh, hospitality, events, aviation, and tourism. That's why uh, our school is uh, named as HEAT from us, from the acronym of uh, Hospitality, Events, Aviation, and Tourism. And uh, obviously, environmental aspects and uh, preservation aspects and sustainability aspects are of exceptional importance for us. 
Considering that uh, our campus is uh, located just a few minutes uh, walk uh, from uh, the, uh, the, the Rocker Preservation Area in Sunderland, uh, less than half an hour drive from, uh, uh, as it was known during the Roman Empire, uh, the end of the civilized war, uh, world, uh, I talk about the Adrian's Wall in the northern of England, and in less than an hour drive from uh, the largest national uh, park of the United Kingdom, uh, the Lake District. So uh, all these aspects, uh, uh, having all these aspects in our minds, uh, we are uh, uh, very concerned about sustainability and environmental aspects and uh, obviously whatever co connects tourism with uh, those aspects. And uh, I would like to thank you for uh, being members of uh, TNC Consortium and I wish you every success uh, to your online conference. Thank you, Nicholas, and thank you for joining us. We also have a few more members who were unable to make it today. First is Sandra Nataro, University of Trento. She is an associate professor in the Department of Economics and Management at the University of Trento. Her current research interests are in non-market valuation, forest economics, resources and environmental economics, economic valuation of environmental goods, sustainable development, and agricultural economics in mountain areas. She has previously been a visiting scholar, professor, or researcher at Colorado State University, University of Wisconsin, and Instituto Agrario San Michele Al Adie. Next, we have Christian Baumgartner with University of Applied Sciences of the Grisons. Christian teaches sustainability development in tourism at the University of Applied Sciences of the Grisons. Christian researches sustainability, tourism, regional development of tourism, climate footprint calculations for tourist destinations, and the impact of education and extracurricular activities on sustainable behavior. Finally, we have one more consortium member, Orike Preibsel-Heder with the University of Natural Resources and Life Science Vienna. Orike, teaches at the Department of Spatial, Landscape, and Infrastructure Sciences at the University of Natural Resources and Life Science in Vienna. Her current research addresses landscape development, recreation, and tourism planning, forest recreation, and protected areas planning. Another focus of her research is the development of environmental assessment and auditing methods with a focus on landscapes in general and ski areas specifically. Again, I just wanna say thank you to all of these consortium members at uh, this conference uh, and all of the Tourism Naturally conferences in the past would not happen without these members.